Hey, how you going everybody? Welcome to How to App on iOS. This is your host Jade. Oh my god, it's the third episode already. And this one is going to be a really exciting one for me because um, we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, as the music dies out there, you may know what's going on just by that music. We are doing an imperfectly perfect interview today with the amazing Pete Johns and his new EP, uh, Maybe. But before I uh, jump over to him, I'm just going to let everybody know who's uh, here exactly what's happening with this show. I've made a few plans for the next week. I've decided to do this five days a week. So Monday to Thursday, I'll be doing these app, um, little app sections of 20 minutes uh, with apps. And every Friday, I'll be doing a live interview with somebody. And then Saturday and Sunday, I got the weekend off, yeah. So, let's bring the music right down. So, for those of you who don't know, Pete Johns is one of the most unique, kind, and prolific creators that I have ever met. And I'm going to just bring myself up here. I came across his YouTube channel, uh, like most people, seeking answers relating to music creation and um, for using uh, iOS and particularly GarageBand. Not only did I find the answer to my problem, but three years later, I'm now a huge fan of his music. I'm a contributor to his creativity. And best of all, I'm his friend. So it gives me great pleasure today to be able to reverse the roles and introduce to you on my new show, How To App On iOS, the man consistently described by now more than over 50,000 YouTube subscribers as one of the most talented and decent human beings online. I'd like to welcome Pete Johns. Rock on. Hey, Thank you yeah. for having me. Am I, I'm the first live guest on your new show. That just makes me super pumped. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> now, I'm still getting used to moving all the cameras around here. How are you today, Pete? I'm doing exceptionally well. Yeah, bounced out of bed this morning uh, as, a, as I was chatting to you in the pre-show. Got the EP launched and that's been the big sort of thing on my back for the last three weeks. Of pleasure, obviously, because it's a great fun to create music. But you know what it's like when you get something done and it's yeah. out there and then you can move on. And, uh, and like you, I'm looking forward to a restful weekend of relaxing. Yes, because you took um, some time off for this, didn't you, to get this all I done? I did, yeah. So I took uh, took four weeks off the off the, the day job uh, to to focus in on the music and uh, and do the recording and the mixing and the mastering and the creating. And uh, yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was living the living the rock star dream, just <laughs> a little bit of chime. So it's been it's been good fun. And yeah, like I said, now it's done. And thanks to your help, uh, and thank you for the nice introduction. But thanks to your help, uh, yeah, it, it has drums. Because I don't know that all of the songs would actually have drums, or at least decent drums, if uh, if it wasn't for your support and help with the uh, with the EP. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for letting me vomit my drums all over your beautiful music. So <laughs> <laughs> it, the pleasure was all mine. So all right, let's jump straight into some questions, mm -hmm. because um, look. You, you answer a lot of questions on the weekend with your shows. You spend most of your time on YouTube here answering questions. Um, so look, it was quite hard to sit here and come up with some questions. So I'm going to start off with something which I think is really important. Pete Johns, what does music mean to you? Music to me is is means a lot, means everything. No, music to me is is something that can give me strength when I'm feeling weak. It's something that can make when I'm already having fun, already enjoying things, it can make it even more. It can enhance the good times. So the reason that I think music is important and what it means to me is that it is it is cathartic when you need it and it is enhancing when you uh, not don't need it, uh, but when you're already going well. So I think regardless of what state you're in, regardless of how you're feeling at the time, Time, there's a type of music that is going to not fix your problems, but at least help your problems. So I think the more music in the world that there is, then the better it is for everyone because, uh, yeah, different people engage with music in different ways. But there aren't, I think there's, there's like 1% of people that don't actually like music or something ridiculous. My like. dad. 
<laughs> so it's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good, if you're going to be in a niche, you might as well be in music because uh, you've got a pretty captive audience of some sort of music uh, out there. So yeah, to me, it's a, it's, it's the, the healer uh, of all, not of all things, but it, it just, it just helps. It just helps when you're feeling down and it, uh, and it didn't, like I say, it enhances things when you're feeling up. So what, why wouldn't you love music? Yeah, definitely. I always think of it like um, if uh, the English language is so, um, I, so it's, I don't know, it's kind of like the Bible. You can just m manipulate it to whatever you want. If we were able to delete language and speak through music 24 hours a day, I think the world would be a lot in a better place right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a little agree. bit. <laughs> Agreed. But yeah, no, yeah, I love it, and um, yeah, and and again, it's it's the connections, it's the people side. I think you've mentioned this before, but music is music is a great communicator. I'm I'm a, I'm a card carrying introvert, and uh, I'm not exactly the greatest communicator. You put me in a party, you, you came and met me at a party. People say you talk online, you, you know, you do live streaming, and you do all this thing. Uh, yeah, if I was sitting in the corner at a party, uh, yeah, yeah, you would have struggle to get a conversation out of me. But if you came over and said, "Hey, did you check out the new Pearl Jam album?" Uh, <laughs> suddenly we would be away. We would be off the races. So that's, that's what music can do. That's <laughs> right. Okay, so um, what obstacles in your life um, have you been able to overcome, and um, to be, I mean, to be such a kind and patient teacher for many people online? How did you get to this point? Uh, it hasn't been easy um, at all because I, I lacked the – so the reason it took me a long time to do this is that I, I lacked the confidence. And the reason that I am doing this and that I think it's kind of my – not duty, but it's my mission to, to help as many people as possible is I know that there's a lot of folks who are sitting there right now who are in the spot that I was five years ago which is that you know what you want to do, but you don't have the, the, don't have the conviction, you don't have the confidence to actually go out there and actually do it. So I think the obstacle for me was, yeah, was exactly that, was that I didn't like the sound of my voice. It's really hard for a vocalist when you wow. don't like the sound of your own voice. And I didn't think that the old thing is I didn't think I was good enough. Like you'd listen to music and I remember growing up in the 90s and, and sort of being a teenager and I'd listening to the bands that I loved and then I'd listen to like my demo tape and I'd be like, oh man, that's, that's so far, that's so subpar. And then when I got into the I guess the music education space. I'm like, I looked at the stuff that I was producing, and then what the the professional YouTubers were doing, and I'm like, man, I'm so far behind. Um, and it's you know, it's related to the EP and some of the songs that I produce, but it really just is about like practice makes progress, and you just keep doing things, and and you'll be yeah. amazed, just keep improving at it. So, the the obstacles for me were around the fact that I didn't have the confidence to do it, and that I didn't have the I didn't want to put something out there because I feared judgment. I feared what other people would say. I feared what the repercussions, what would my friends say? What would my family think if I just put myself out there? Did, would they think I was arrogant? Because I, I, I have a real sort of fear of, of being perceived as, as being someone who's arrogant or has a big ego or something like that. So they were all of the things that were in the way. What got me past that was just try, just, just starting and just doing it. I sort of started reading a few sort of motivational books and getting into a little bit of that side of things. And, and yeah, most of them were just saying, yeah, just, just start. And I, and I realized I, my mantra just suddenly became when you don't know where to start, because that was my problem. Like, I've got all these options. What do I do when you yeah. don't know where to start? Just start and use what you have now to create. So they're kind of the two things that I tell other people that are in the same position as me. It's like, I, I started this channel with an iPhone four, and like I was, so I was I. my iPhone channel. 4 with it. No, it was a 4S with an iPhone 4. Like I, I was yeah. recording a crappy iPhone with another crappy iPhone uh, and putting up <laughs> 720p videos that were blurry. The audio was crackly and had hiss and stuff. So you can go back. You can go back to the channel. Like I, and now I'm actually proud of them. And it's the same with music. I'm actually proud of the things I did because if I had sat around for the last five years waiting to create the perfect song and hadn't released and hadn't shared anything – then I would still be sitting there frustrated and, and annoyed because I wasn't achieving what I wanted. But the only way to do it is to just get, get out of your comfort zone, put it out there, try it. The, apart from the random strangers on the internet who simply don't matter, um, then everyone else is – you'll be amazed at how supportive everyone is if you, if you just put yourself out there. True words. I'm doing it right now. Thanks to you again. <laughs> and, you know, you mentioned going back to your early videos. I actually did that last night. And I, before I set up all the assets for this little interview thing to know, and I, uh, I wanted to just go back to see how far you had come 
because this is only my third episode and already I'm changing the assets around. And I know by next week, they're all going to be different again. And I love that. I love yep. that. I'm not trying to get it perfect now. It's just going to manifest. So again, thank you. You know, it's something you so many people get so many different things from what you put out online, which is just incredible. Um, I don't know how you maintain it, honestly. Um, <laughs> so speaking of people, what are the people that have impacted you and your core values and musical tastes throughout your life? Uh, it, it, it's a pretty easy one. Core values, is, it comes from my parents. So mum and dad are, are two of my biggest supporters. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. It, it, it's a, it's a good thing because I, I know that's not always the case and that's not the case for everyone. And it, it is, it's not that you need to have parents that, that sort of set you up and my parents set me up musically, but they also set me up to, to hopefully to be a good person and to be, to be kind and sharing and, and do the things I do. Uh, but yeah, it, it really, to, to me that, that sort of sparked things because they would play a lot of really cool music, uh, a lot of the sixties music that they started with the, the six o'clock rock. I think I've talked about it on my shows before. It used yeah. to be like six hours of sixties music on a, on a Saturday night. And I'd just sit down and know all the words to all of the different songs. And a lot of those songs, like you listen to music nowadays, a lot of it is built around the fifties, sixties, seventies, oh, sure. a lot of those chord progressions, a lot of those guitar tones, a lot of the things we were listening to then, well, not we were, but I was listening to, uh, has, has made that uh, now. Um, and I think uh, the other person uh, the other person and people, like my, my friends and my family and, of course, my wife, because uh, I was – one of the other challenges that I had is that I was I was quite opinionated and, let's just say, judgmental in my in my teens and through my 20s. I, I think because I – I, I, I finished school. I didn't go to university. I sort of went and started working. And then it was I, a lot of my other friends were at uni and doing other things. And I think because I got that that reality check of the real world of, you know, you've got to make money and you've got to pay the bills and you've got to do the things. I think that really, um, yeah, it, it, it cha- it's set me up to be, like I say, a little bit too judgmental because I would say, you know, if, if someone else wasn't willing to do what I did, then I was like, why would they not do that? Why do people not want to be like me? And uh, and I think it was it was my wife, Georgie, who, who brought me into the world of like, and what I say now is that, God, if everyone was like me, the world would just be pandemonium. <laughs> like, we would not need everyone to be like me. And I think over especially the last five and ten years, uh, having kids and, and sort of growing up and maturing, I've just realized that it's actually so important that we have diversity and that there's different people and that you create things with different people, but also that you have different people in your life because you can you can you can channel yourself into a box. You can channel yeah, yourself yeah. into this this little world, this little bubble where you get caught up in just all of the the same stuff. And if you if I'm again, if I was talking to another nine people just like me, then I wouldn't have the ability <laughs> to find new things and new ideas and new. I mean, relating it back to music, um, I, I was I was saying to you, um, I, I really didn't like your drums for my song Fence Sitter when you first sent them to me, and I've I've said this to I you. I knew you wouldn't. I, I played them back <laughs> like this is not what I had in mind, Jay. What are you doing? And then I'm like, hang on, don't don't do that, don't don't do that. I'm like, okay, I went away, I went away, I had a coffee, and I came back and listened to it again. I'm like. There's something there, isn't there? And then I came back again and I like, listened to it third time. I'm like, yeah, there it is. And to me, that's the thing. That, that again, back to core values and back to music as well. But that's the thing with with this is that the the power of having multiple people and multiple ideas coming in yeah. is so much better than anything you can do yourself. And the power of collaboration. And that's why, whenever I do a video, I try to focus back in on. Don't do things like I say. Don't don't do what I say. Don't replicate the things that I do. But look at what I do then go away and see, will this work for me? If it does, fantastic. If it doesn't, well, now you know something that doesn't work. Sure. I think I said to you yesterday that failure is as important, if not more important than success when it comes to anything in life because yeah. knowing what doesn't work can just help you hone in on what is going to work. So if you want to try a hip-hop record, like go make a hip-hop record. If it's terrible and it sucks – guess what? Now you know that, but you never know. It might actually be awesome. You might really enjoy it. And someone might say that's a cool hip hop album. So yeah, that was a long winded answer or way. No, that's, way of, uh, that's, uh, that's what makes me tick. As they say, you never, never know till you never, ever go. Uh, was it Northern <laughs> Territory advertising? Oh, um, it is. Speaking about the drums that you mentioned yep. too, like I, I knew what you had in mind because I, I just, I just felt it. I think I'd heard you say a boom bat, boom bat. Um, but my friend James, um, 
said, I reckon you should do this to it. And he just sent me this, I can't even remember who it was. It was just this jazz thing of this yeah. light ride and just a, and I thought, yeah. It wasn't the same beat or anything. And I went, yeah, it's got to be lower than the whole thing and just rattling yeah. along kind of thing. And I, I knew as soon as I was doing it, I'm going, he's going to hate this. This is awesome. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Because, you know, that's what it's about. Putting people out of their comfort zone to not expect what, what you know, what's what's coming. Um, oh, something else I was going to say. I can come back to it. So, all right. Yeah. Let's see. Where are my questions here? Why did you decide to become a YouTube creator? And what led up to the inception of studio live today yeah it's that, it, it's weird i've told the story a, only a couple of times before but um the the basis of it was the basis of why i started creating was that no one was creating it comes back to sort of what works for you and what doesn't no one was creating the sort of videos that i wanted to watch to learn how to do the things i wanted to do so that's no disturbance to the likes of Patrick at GarageBand Guide and other folks at the time that were creating some GarageBand videos, but no one was really focusing in on, hey, if you've got an iPhone or an iPad and you want to just use GarageBand, you want to do things super simple uh, and you don't exactly have all the know-how and all the technical knowledge, how do you actually do it? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, th so that was kind of the impetus because I just, every time I opened GarageBand, I got frustrated. I didn't know how to get more than eight bars on there, which is just weird because it's still crazy that it just defaults to eight bars and so many people pick it up, make an oh, eight bar man. and go, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I didn't even know how to do that. And I didn't know how to mix and I didn't know what mastering even meant. And a lot of things I didn't know. So I guess for me, it was, I wanted to learn. And at the time I was reading again, a bunch of stuff and, and learning about learning styles and uh, in my day job, sort of learning more about sort of customer experience, all this sort of thing. Uh, and, and I just thought, there's actually an opportunity here for me to learn, to be selfishly to learn myself because the best way to learn something is often to teach someone else how to do it. So there was that side of it. And then the, the, the flip side was I'm like, well, yeah, other people might actually be interested in this. So I'm like, well, I might as well just start doing this. So my first videos were music memos. So I learned how to use music memos on my iPhone. What an uh, app. <laughs> oh, great app. And then I started using, um, just started using GarageBand and creating in GarageBand. I'm like, I'll just start making videos. And my first videos, as we mentioned, were terrible. They were about 20 minutes long. They were unedited. There was lots of ums and ahs and breathing and terrible noise and bad blurry video. But they were a hell of a lot of fun. So I just kept doing it from there. The The, the whole studio live today thing was weird because I was, I was thinking about doing this for a while and I was sitting at the cricket at the Adelaide Oval here in Adelaide and I was just sitting there and for some reason I'm like, I'm going to just start thinking of names of websites. And you know what it's like when you're trying to register a domain yeah. name, something that is easy to say, easy to remember, and most of them are already taken. Or the good ones you have to pay a thousand bucks for. So I was just thinking, what do I want to do eventually? I'm like, oh, studio. I want to do something about home studio. Um, I want it to be like, yeah, eventually I want to do live streaming. So let's get live in there. And I'm like, oh, and I want to, I want to make this thing where I do, it's every day. So I'm like, studio live today. <laughs> Goal. And I Put the words together, and I went, oh, studiolivetoday.com. I literally sat there at hover.com in the in the outfield of the cricket, like just watching, going, oh, it's available, bye, and just put it down and just walked away. Like two months later was when I started creating these. I'm like, oh, crap, i got that domain name, studiolivetoday.com. <laughs> That'd be a good name for this channel. And you'd know to this day, my channel's still called Pete Johns. I've yeah, never actually yeah. changed the name to Studio Live Today. So... Uh, it is it is Pete Johns as Studio Live today, but yeah, that was that was the the impetus for getting it done, and, and it was really no there was no plan around it. There's no I want to be. I know a lot of a lot of people these days, and a lot of kids these days too, which I find a little bit terrifying. They want to be YouTubers. They want to be Insta famous. They want yeah. to be social media celebrities, and I think that that's a concern because I don't think again I'm not without at, at the risk of sounding a bit wanky. It's not all sort of it's not all the glamorous stuff. It's not just what you see in the video. Videos, the amount of hard work and effort that goes in behind that I'm not talking about just me but every creator like that's someone right. that creates a, a highly edited and polished five minute video for youtube that gets a million views that's probably been two weeks of blood sweat and tears yeah. to try and put that together so uh yeah i want to i want to reinforce the 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 challenge and the fact that it is work as it is fun it's, it's really enjoyable but it is work as well because it takes a lot of effort yeah i 
This is my third episode. I think I spent six hours yesterday on assets just going, <laughs> I'm going to headbutt the wall, going to headbutt the wall. Um, you, you work it all out. You learn how to do it. Then you can teach me how to do all this coolness that I see around me. <laughs> <laughs> you lie. You can't see it right now. Oh, unless you are. <laughs> There's the I'm, bubble of illusion. I'm, I'm into That's wrestling. <laughs> right now. Break the third wall. Break the third wall. I'm into wrestling. It's all fake. It's kayfabe. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's talk about some of your music. How do you describe the lyrical themes of your music? The lyrical theme, I, I've been told, like I'll tell you how I describe it, but I've been told that my songs are storytelling songs. I get compared to like James Taylor and people that, that have story elements in, in their songs. So yeah, I, I, and I do, I do believe in that. It's weird. I, I was listening to um, my music from back in the '90s. I had a band called Scarpa, and we, we, we wanted to be Nirvana, basically. So yeah, we, we would play, we would sing songs, and we would play grungy music. And the lyrics in that made no sense. Like I, I really listened back to them, and I thought, what was I even thinking? Like it was that, the '90s. It was the night. It didn't have to make sense, but <laughs> I don't know if I was trying to be so cryptic that it actually makes no sense to me now. Maybe I had a point at the time, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's it, leading to what I actually write now. What 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 I think the the songs. I want them to send a message of. I want them to make you think, basically. So I know there's a lot of music around, and music doesn't have to make you think. Sometimes music should actually do the opposite. It should make you not think. And so I don't yeah. want to say that the only good, the only valid music is music that actually has a message or makes you think. But I like the fact that I can express myself through music a lot better than I can through the spoken word, and I can say some things in certain ways. And you said at the start of the at the start of the show that the 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 English language and any language is so good because you can manipulate it and you can make things sound like one thing but actually mean another thing. Yeah. You can make on the surface level they're saying one thing, but if you dig a little deeper, they say a second thing. And the thing I like the most, and again, Nirvana, Nirvana here, Kurt Cobain uh, got asked a, got asked the same question. He said, "What? What? How would you describe the music of Nirvana? How would you describe the lyrics of your songs? What do they mean?" And his answer was, in true Kurt Cobain style, it was like, uh, "I don't know, man. It's it, it's your jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> like you, it, it's for you to figure it out." And I wouldn't ever say anything that wanky, but um, yeah, it, it's it's like that. It's whatever it means to you. So some people may look at a song and say, on the surface, that's a catchy song with a nice hook and a cool melody and a nice tune. I'm like, great, thank you. And then someone else might say, oh, that really spoke to me because it said this and this and this. And I'm like, okay, I had no idea. It's that weird wasn't when that I, happens. <laughs> but uh, if, that, if, it, if it helped you and if that's what it meant to you, that's great too. So yeah, I think it doesn't really matter. Like the, I put the message out there, it's got the vibe that I want there and some people will pick up exactly that and other people will pick up different meanings as long as they're not picking up the exact opposite meaning that we shouldn't be positive and we shouldn't be tolerant which uh, hopefully isn't the case but uh, apart from that yeah w w whatever people want to get from it is is their own thing I think um, what originally drew me to your music when we met was um, after I saw your tutorial video and you helped me out before we even like chatted Mm -hmm. Was that our writing styles were so similar? Probably, yeah. I'm probably a bit more blunt sometimes, especially on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's a different story. But, you know, the, I think I really fell in love with your music because you were so... I mean, I don't, I don't, when I listen to your music, I, I can hear pretty much exactly what you're saying. I mean, I, you don't pull any punches, um, I, I think. But of, as you say, people hear different things and... I've had people come up to me about my songs and say, oh, I meant this. And I'm like, Whoa, you must have been on LSD when you heard this song. <laughs> totally not about that. Um, so how does Pete Johns find balance? The balance that is needed in life, work and the creati creativity thingy. Yeah, it's it, it's a good question, and I'm not going to profess to say that I always get it exactly right because I don't like everyone. Um, I think it's a, it's an ongoing challenge to do this. So for me to have a again a day job and thankful well not thankfully but I, I do have the four weeks off to do the EP, so I've been enjoying that. Uh, but yeah, usually I've got a day job, so eight hours a day. Uh, I've got a wife and family, house, mortgage, bills, dogs, all all, all that sort of thing yeah. to, to do. Um, so yeah, it it is about finding and and the, the advice I've given other people because I know people. People say this to me all the time. The question is, I want to do something like you're doing or I want to create music or I want to create videos or whatever it is, but I just don't have the time. And it, it's true. It's a challenge. You only have finite time. You've got a limited amount of time. But what I did when I first started doing this is I started 
really carefully prioritizing and really aggressively prioritizing my time into what was actually important to me and what would be fulfilling to me. So I used to love playing PlayStation. Like I would sit and play PS4 for <laughs> six hours. Like seriously, the wife and kids would go to bed and I'd sit down at like 9 p.m. And then at like 2 a.m. I'd be like, oh, I should probably turn in. And that was that was fine. That was fun, you know, drinking beer and playing games. And you you need uh, – uh, Chris Hardwick wrote a book called The Nerdist and I, I like this because I – consider myself a bit of a nerdist which is like a nerd but a creative nerd so uh, and he said you need dick around time so do, don't, yeah. don't let it be said that you shouldn't be playing video games so when i when i'm feeling really stressed and i'm like okay i just i just can't even then yeah i'll go drink a beer and play a video game for it but i'll do it for an hour and then yeah. i'll go to bed as yeah. opposed to the six hour sessions i used to do because that five hours I can do so much. And if you if you sit down and in five hours these days, I can actually uh, script and record and edit and release a video. I can probably write a chorus of a song. I can probably go onto my website, my YouTube channel and do some comment responding and, and admin work and that sort of thing. So again, I think it's just about prioritization. And for, for me, the reason to do things is to get better at them. And you'd be amazed at how quick you get it. Like, like you said, you took all this time in the last few days to get this show honed. I bet you in a week's time, it'll be running like a well-oiled machine and, and you'll be you'll take five minutes to prep. So my live streams on the weekend now, I flick on my mixer, I swivel this mic in front of myself, I turn my camera and my lights on and I hit go live. And yeah. you can see, that. sometimes you'll see that I've literally just sort of sat down, boom, boom, hey, welcome to the show. So that's the sort of thing I think that, People, people look at it and they get overwhelmed and daunted by how much it is. So if you just look at it as, yeah, it's going to suck and it's going to take a long time to start with, it's going to be a long, long time, Jay. Um, it's going to take a while to get started, but the more you do it, the better you get. <laughs> dead on, dead on. And, and, you know, look, I spent all that time yesterday and before we prepared for the show, I think you popped off for a shower, I put on some makeup exactly what you said that's how i set up today i turned on the mixer turned on the computer everything was all ready to go and it was just waiting for you to come on and we were going and the only thing that i got wrong was i had the time set for the show for 8 p.m <laughs> instead of like two minutes and we were like ah, how do i do this pete help me you're the guru <laughs> But we sorted it out. So oh, showing behind the curtain too much, Jade. Oh, again, look, again, you know. perfect. I'm You're not a, to blame, blame blame your tools. Don't blame yourself. That's that's what a, a true musician does. Well, I'm not. A, I'm not a YouTuber. Look, I'll be honest. Why is, why I'm actually doing this? Look, I get a lot of people through being on your channel and being in the GarageBand users group have asked me to do these kind of things, and mm. I'm just not experienced at doing this kind of stuff. Um, but I've been really sick lately and this week I had a massive blood transfusion and I'm actually feeling a lot better for it. Um, I'm actually doing this at this time in the morning at 8am to be able to get up each day and have something to do to actually get out of bed mm -hmm. and not let people down and not let myself down. And then once I'm up, I can hopefully get through and do a few more things instead of be in pain and stuck in bed. And yesterday I did so much by the time it got to like 11 o'clock, I was asleep like that. It was yeah. fantastic. I got to sleep for a change. <laughs> it, it, it is good. And, and it's so true. Like if you do, if you want to do something, the, best, the thing is like, again, if you don't know where to start, sound like a motivational speaker. I don't mean to. But when you don't know where to start, just start. Just start doing something. Do yeah. anything. And, and it will just give you some of that purpose. And, and then, like the, the important, you know, I say create, record, release. The release is the sharing. So release doesn't mean you have to put out an EP or an album or a single or, or sure. do things. Share what you're doing because it does a couple of things. It will help you to make better stuff. It will get feedback from other people. And it just feels bloody good to be done with something <laughs> like, like this EP. It feels good to just have it finished. And then you can move on to the next thing. If you just keep grinding and working on the same thing forever, you will. Uh, work, work will expand. <laughs> Fill the time you have. Trust me. <laughs> I am going to do that at the moment. Um, so let's have a look at the chat because uh, we'll take a moment here. So we've got Bubba here. Thanks for joining us, Bubba. Uh, Tom Rochelle. Scott's here. Michael Alba. Who else? Michael Alba. Um, Christian GC. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us. I'm sorry about the time being stuffed up. That's my fault. Um, <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to ask the million dollar question what everybody wants to know yes what kind of adapter do i need to connect an audio interface to my ipad <laughs> 
<laughs> make sure you get the genuine Apple Lightning to USB 3 adapter. Oh, no, I don't have that handy. I usually have it as a prop that I just wave aggressively in people's face. I finally got this super cheap one, this Chinese one, but I've got a USB C. That's actually not the question. I thought I'd throw it in there for fun. Oh, that, that is good. Because... And no garage band is not available on PC before you leave. Oh, God. I've, n- I've never heard anybody ask that before. Oops. Oh, um, I have. <laughs> not to me anyway. Like, yeah. I've actually gone looking for it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. That's a different story. Um, all right, so let's bring up uh, this screen here. Because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask you about your album. But before I do that, I'm going to play a track from it. Um, where are we? So there's the screen. So here's Pete Johns' uh, album cover. Fantastic album cover. I mean, you talked about it in the stream yesterday. As soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it. It's just absolutely perfect for the lyrical content, the music. Perfectly imperfect. It's, <laughs> I mean, you said you were holding on to it. Hold on again uh, for a while. And, you know, it's the right choice. It just feels absolutely spot on. Um, so what I'm going to do, grab my iPad here and get past my lock screen, <laughs> as usual. And let's get a bit of things have changed. Oops. Let's start that again. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, that's the beauty of an old headphone connection. the same everything's changed even the sun doesn't feel so bright today when will it end when can we leave right now I'd settle for a small reprieve it's been a week and feels like a year Doing okay, but you're not near. Are you okay? Do you feel fine? How are you finding things in this new design? Don't know how long it's gonna last, but like everything, this too shall. This too shall pass. That was uh, Things Have Changed from Pete Johns' new EP called Maybe. Tell us a little about a little bit about this EP. Sure, that song's way too long, by the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> minute forty-seven. Um, yeah, so the 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 EP was it was originally going to be an album. So I had the idea to do another album. I did a, did my first and only full-length album in two thousand eighteen called Selfish Aware, and then I've been recording some singles. Put out a couple of these songs, so No Apologies, which you did the drums on, and uh, and Hold On, which you didn't, which is why the original version was terrible. Um, I released those uh, those singles over the last sort of year, and. The idea was always to for May 2020 for me to do an album. Uh, I, I realised, and it, someone it was you gave me advice to say make sure that you. Because I think I, I rushed my album. So to be honest, in 2018 I rushed the album. It, it's good, and I'm glad it's out there, and I'm glad it's done. I probably could have spent another month on it and polished it up, and it would be better. But again, I still like the fact that it's a body of work and it's a it's a snapshot in time. Uh, but this time around, I thought instead of trying to crack out t- ten songs. Why don't I focus in on five songs, pick the five best songs, the quality songs that I know are going to fit the the mold and the theme of the album, and then go with that. Now, as you know, that was the last song to actually finally make the cut because I wasn't sure that I wanted that on the on the EP. The, the EP is it, it's called Maybe, uh, mostly because No Apology starts with Maybe. Like it's all the maybe, it's all the questioning yeah. of yourself and, and the questioning of myself over time. And then uh, Fence Sitter is all about maybe. It's like it's okay to be a maybe. Um, you don't always have to have a strong opinion either way. So that's sort of where the, the, the idea sort of came from with the, the EP. 
that song is my lockdown song. Like again, I know everyone kind of has a lockdown song that they wrote during during this time, uh, during the C word. And uh, yeah, that was my lockdown song. And to be honest, I I wrote it in a day and I just put out a demo version of it. And if it wasn't, and this is again, this is the beauty of sharing. I didn't think much of it. To me, it was it's four chords and it's uh, like eight lines of of um, lyrics. So, but it, for some reason, it resonated with people and people felt the same way and said that, yeah, and, and even to the point where my buddy Joey Helpish um, and Glenn Clark, like they both, not to my knowledge, I put out this demo and the next morning I woke up and Joey had like recorded some extra bits yeah. to it and then Glenn had recorded some extra bits to it and then you covered it on, <laughs> on one of your live shows and I'm like, okay, so this song clearly means something to other people and again, it's the reason I mentioned that is not to say, isn't it good that everyone liked my song, but to say that sometimes you don't know your judgment, don't always trust your judgment For about sure. your, and it sounds weird because you should like your music. And I didn't hate the song, but sometimes you put music and you put art out into the world that other people are going to like even more than you do. And you won't actually know what it has and what it means to other people yeah. until you share it. So that was the, that was the, the mess, the, uh, the response there. And then, yeah, the, the rest is history. So the EP had the three weeks, like I said, I, I set myself three weeks. I, I like to use something I call positive time pressure, which means that I knew I had to do this in three weeks. If I didn't set the 3rd of June as a deadline and then work backwards, there's no way that this would be done by now. I'm a born procrastinator and I have to set myself guidelines and I have to set myself actual drop dead dates. Otherwise, I just don't get stuff done. So, yeah, that's kind of the story of the songs and the EP and how it all came together. And now it's out there and, uh, yeah, I hope folks enjoy it. And it's brilliant. And speaking of the 3rd of June, you actually tried to jump forward two days as well. You were like, when you first announced it, you were like 3rd of June, and then it changed <laughs> over like a week or two, and then you're like the 1st of June. And I'm sitting there going, what? Dude, why are you cutting two days off? I remember saying it to you just towards the end. I'm like, didn't you say the 3rd? And ironically, I... it came out on the 3rd. Like, It did, you yeah. Nailed it. I... Which is weird because, uh, yeah, thank, and thank you, DistroKid. I don't know. Uh, and thank you to Apple and Spotify and whoever. Yeah. I don't know who I did the right thing to or said the right thing to. But, yeah, it only took 24 hours to get oh, – no, right? It only <laughs> took 24 hours to get out to all of the different platforms. So that was – that was pretty cool. But yeah, I did I did want the reason I wanted the first of June is I just wanted two extra days to play video games, like let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I agree with video games. I don't have a PlayStation anymore, but because I got this new gaming laptop, uh, I downloaded Tomb Raider, GTA five. And that's yeah. what's got me out of my funk, to be honest, because I spend a couple of hours a night between midnight to two in the morning and I'm doing that. And it's really got me creating again because I went through a slump. Uh, too during uh, I can say COVID nineteen on my channel because I I'm not monetized yeah <laughs> all right I'm gonna let's throw a weird question out there let's throw something oh. like what's the most unique request you've had from a fan what is the most unique request <sighs> I had strange at first but I didn't want to out anybody and yeah, make someone yeah, feel bad uh, no there's I'm trying to think that to be honest. Most of the requests I get are to collaborate or to mix or master someone else's music. So none of them are particularly strange. There has been some strange genre. Actually, no, uh, here's the truth. Uh, and I know that he won't mind me saying this. So uh, uh, my buddy Lawrence, because he's a friend of mine now, we've had a, a chat back and forth a few times. I actually interviewed him on the channel. He does um, – now, it's not it's not hypnotherapy. That, that sounds like he, like, dangles coins in – but it's, it's his hypnosis therapy. Um, so he does that. And he was trying to get together a rig so that he could actually do hypnosis and play music and, like, do all these things with his clients at the same time. And we still haven't solved it. So uh, it, it's a weird thing that if you want to try and bring together – two sets of headphones, two microphones, um, the backing track for it so that he can talk to the, the, the customer, they can talk back to him. It's like we needed to set up some sort of weird rig like you'd have in an aeroplane or like in some sort of CB radio or something. And we couldn't quite get it down because no matter, like, unless you spent $1,000 on a full like live audio rig that you'd use on like a, a live set or, or a stage – there's really nothing there for that. So, yeah, that, that was the weirdest one because I thought, yeah, at first I just get this thing saying, hi, I, I do hypnosis therapy. And I'm just like, where is this going? At what point <laughs> am I going to be able to help you when you do hypnosis therapy? You want to hypnotize me to write better songs or like what what, what is happening here? So 
that was probably the most left field and, and unique one. But yeah, like uh, the different styles of music, uh, it's actually been really good for me. But people have wanted me to to mix styles of music, and and I, I do. I reply to them just saying, "Have you listened to any of my music?" Like they'll they'll send me these real hardcore EDM tracks with big beefy 808s and things, and I'm like. I'm happy to have a listen and have a go, but you know this isn't my wheelhouse. Like it's <laughs> yeah. not the sort of music I produce. And they're like, "Ah, oh, man, you'll be fine with it." I'm like, "I probably won't be." Uh, all, with all due respect, uh, thank you for your confidence in me, but uh, yeah, no, you might want to find a producer that kind of specialises in that. But yeah, apart from that, thankfully, uh, yeah, most people are awesome. In fact, yeah, I, I have the the 99% rule. 99% of people all the time are awesome. There's the 1% of strangers on the internet who are in a bad place and yeah. choose to spend their time uh, hating on other people. And again, the only way I look at that, and I know you didn't ask me about the sort of the hater factor, but the, the way I look at that is that, yeah, I just try and approach that with empathy. And I say, you know what, if they got nothing better in their life than to spend time on other people's channels writing hateful comments, then that's actually really sad for them. So I won't tolerate it because it's not acceptable. But at the same time, I do feel a bit bad because you must be in a pretty dark place if that's if that's where you go to, uh, unprovoked. And that's For the thing. Sure. I'm, I, I said it in a recent stream, I'm like, uh, yeah, normal people, not normal people, but uh, compassionate humans don't go and hate on other humans unprovoked for no reason. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's not a cool thing. So, but anyway, I know you didn't ask about that, but I, I like to talk. It is an interesting topic, though. I, I still get a few times a week through my website, and it's been going on for years. I mean, you would think we're progressing as a as a species. I still get mm. random emails from people through my website just saying stuff like, die tranny. <laughs> it's like, and, you know, look, and, you know, I, I'm pretty ruthless with stuff on Facebook with, like, politics and stuff and people who do bad shit, and I'll be really angry. But mm. I couldn't imagine, like, seriously just saying stuff like that to somebody just, I don't know die gray haired dude like you know like it's just weird but yeah so you've had no people send you underpants or request underpants or anything no, like that. I, nothing, nothing weird no no no, no <laughs> underpant related stuff awesome. yeah touch wood but uh, you never know you never know your luck in a big city <laughs> awesome so we're nearing the end and uh this is a the main feature of the interview each friday i want to know and let's cut to my uh, main screen here so i can bring up the ipad and what you talk about here i can kind of hopefully show um we'll bring up the app store Here we go what are your 10 well oh god let's rephrase the question can you give me a list of 10 apps on ios that if discontinued tomorrow would destroy your creative workflow mm, i can indeed um the the yeah i mean these are going to be pretty obvious because sure. to to be honest like I've, I've interviewed you i've interviewed a lot of other folks uh the fingers uh, marcus manderson like a lot of people that i've interviewed just show me their screen after screen of amazing apps and i just i just don't use that many it's the, yeah. it's the reality but there are some that i that i do rely on uh can we just get it out of the way and say garage band is going to be sure number one because i i have and do and probably always will uh use garage band for a lot of the production and a lot of the work that i do in uh in ios it is just the do you want me to just should i just say the num the names or do you want me to give a spiel about each one no, and why you can do it at whatever pace you like <laughs> i'm bringing them up as you're saying them so cool so garage band i mean it's free it is super powerful it has evolved over time it has its limitations but i actually love its limitations because they actually make me more creative and and find ways around and i know you're a you, you're a, a, an iOS hacker from way back, Jade. So you know the fun of finding a way to do something in something that's not designed to do it. That's always really cool. So oh, yeah. I like that. But it, it covers all things. Like I can sit down with my kids and they can jump into Beat Sequencer and create a cool, unique beat in eight bars in about five minutes. Or I can record an entire you know, 12, 16, 24 track rock track uh, with real drums and real guitars and real vocals. So it is so flexible with all the things you can do. So, yeah, no, no big surprise. Pete likes GarageBand, I know. Right, right on the walls because uh, no one knew that going in. Damn straight. Uh, number two is super boring. And it's actually, you, you kind of get it by default. But it, it's something that I use all the time and it's the Files app. <laughs> You're like, oh, Pete, this is really boring. No. Files is uh, is essential. Before we had files, like to manage files, I mean, there were things like documents. I know you use a lot of uh, use documents a lot and other ways to actually manage your files. But just having your iCloud drive 
all the stuff that's on your iPad or your iPhone, your audio share files, if you're me, and you know, that's a hint for another one coming up. Um, and then you can also like add all your locations. So Dropbox, Google Drive, um, OneDrive, they're all just there in one spot. And so it just means you can access everything you have, drag things around, put them around. And since iOS 13 added compression for zipping stuff up and unzipping stuff, that's been a huge game changer because Apple don't like share, like their, their file systems are not compatible with other file systems. So if you've got a GarageBand file, you've got an iMovie project, you've got a lot of other mm. files that are Apple, if you try to put them on Google or Dropbox or OneDrive, they will just instantly corrupt and fail. So you need to zip them up and that's what I use files for. If that went away, not being able to collaborate and you know just send you off a bunch of WAV files by zipping them up or send you off a GarageBand file by zipping it up, that would uh, definitely hurt my creativity. It would be a lonely time as collaborators. It would. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Which takes me to Audio Share. Now, you talked about Audio Share yesterday, the day before. I think every episode. You're probably going to mention Audio Share in almost every episode of this yeah. uh, of this series because it is it is like the it's like the linchpin. It's like if, if the Lightning to USB adapter is the linchpin of your your hardware, uh, Audio Share is the linchpin of your software because without it, you can do things, but they just take three times as long and are ten times as complicated. So. Audio Share is, if you don't know about it, it's a audio, a high quality audio recorder. So you can just set it, hit record. You can adjust bit rate, sampling rate, uh, recording quality. It is a ability to transfer, so it shares per its name. It's got a Wi-Fi drive feature, and then it's got copy and paste features that you can copy and paste between different apps, which you showed with Grand Finale yesterday. And yeah, it, it is just, it's the Swiss army knife of apps for iOS. If you, if you create audio, and even if you don't, I, I use it in weird ways. I use it to transfer my video files that I record on my computer with OBS. I just log into the, the Wi-Fi drive here. Yeah. I send video file to my iPhone. I then combine that with the screen recording from my iPhone and edit in LumaFusion right here on my phone. So it can do things outside of just audio. It can do file sharing and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah. It's the cost of a cup of coffee and it'll change your whole workflow. It's amazing. In, agreed. Uh, all right, let's talk some plugins. I know you like a good plugin. Yeah. Uh, first plugin here is uh, one that I would not leave home without. It is the LRC5 EQ plugin from Neon Silicon. Damn straight. Uh, so before this one, before this, we had we have the Visual EQ on GarageBand. So you've got your three bands. But the, the challenge with the Visual EQ is you don't have any proper shelf filters. You don't have any ability to adjust the Q setting, which is how wide or how narrow your EQ is. And you've only got maximum of three bands. What LRC5 does is it gives you a full five-band parametric EQ right in your iPhone or your iPad. It's an AUV3 plug-in. You can use it in GarageBand or any other DAW in, in iOS. And it just works. It's just simple, doesn't hog up a bunch of processing power, stick it at the end of all of your chains, and then you can do pinpoint little little tiny tweaks. Like, so when I was mastering, I just threw LRC5, and I'm like, there's a little tiny sort of hissy, essy sound there that I'm, I'm hitting in one of my songs. I think it was Fence Sitter. And I just went, I found that by pinpointing it with the EQ, and then I just dropped it down about 3 dB at that frequency. And that little tweak just made those squeaky bits at the top end just slightly rolled off and worked a treat so yeah. i had no idea you could notch filter until i saw you use it the other day in your mastering video i've been using it like it's on every track i use and then i'm like what yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know and i spent i think i spent like 180 on the whole suite of oh god what's the brand of I forget what they called the high-end um no i can't even think of what they're called doesn't matter and yeah. and i mainly got them anyway for the yeah. notch filtering and then lrc's got it unbelievable it does yeah it, it is it's about it's about a 30 dollar app for free like really in yeah, terms of value sure if you is. get out of it others it's yeah it's worth getting okay. uh next uh right uh, next is the, <laughs> the the plugin that my wife finds the funniest name of a plugin and that is the rough rider oh yeah free plugin <laughs> Ooh, said, there's, cowboy. Not, there's not really an app called Rough Ride. I'm like, there is, and it's all. Uh, so Rough Ride. <laughs> well, it's number three as well. So. <laughs> it is. It's the third. It must be, it's people loving it so much, they want three Rough Rides. Um, so Rough Rider 3 is a, a compressor, but it is, it's not your it's not your everyday compressor. This ain't, this ain't your grandma's compressor. This is a compressor <laughs> that's got some guts to it. It's got some dirt. It's got some grit. You can drive it up. You can put it on your vocals, your guitars, your drums, your entire master if you want to just give it. And I think you were talking yesterday in Grand Finale that, 
Sometimes you want to compress things. Sometimes you want to use volume, but sometimes you just want to do it. You want to rub it in the dirt a bit. You want to dirty things up a bit. And uh, Rough Rider can do that without – because the thing, pe- people go distortion and they like turn the volume up and then things start clipping. Rough Rider gives you the benefit of having that graveliness without actually struggling and clipping and getting that horrible distortion in the For top sure. end. Yeah. Love me some Rough Rider. Yeah, it's, it's Rough Rider. It's rougher than your grandma's um, surgical stockings. It's hot. Speaking of plugins, so there's there, some freebies. If you got some cash to spend, uh, I would spend it. The, basically, the 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 if you want something that's really simple but also has a whole bunch of bells and whistles and can do things, you can't go past the FAC range of plugins. So FAC Maxima, it's by uh, Fred Anton Corvest, who's a, a developer who does some really good stuff. The Maxima plugin is a, it's like a compressor, but it's also, I mean, it's a bit of a limiter. It does a lot of things. You can, you can tweak it. You can use it as a brick wall limiter on your masters. You can use it as just like a nice hard compressor on your guitars. It, it does everything. It's got cool. It looks cool. So like, yeah, apps that look cool. Like they do actually make you a bit more inspired sometimes. If you turn a cool knob and a dial and you get a cool little visual display, don't underestimate the value of something that looks cool. Apple have been trading off that for 20 years. So uh, if it looks cool, sometimes it is. Um, so yeah, go with FAC. The chorus is also cool too. If you're going to pick up another Maxima plugin, uh, FAC Maxima, FAC Chorus. He's got Bandit. He's got Evolver. There's just yeah, there's so many cool things that you can delve into. You'll uh, yeah, protect. Don't don't don't, uh, don't have too much uh, spare space on your credit card, or you'll probably give Fred about a hundred dollars because he's just got a heap of cool apps. Definitely worth checking out. Yeah, I'm just looking at them here. I haven't bought any of them. That's terrible. <laughs> Okay. There, well, there's Fred... only so much money in the world and i already have like i think my entire app store collection not just music apps i yep. think i think i'm up to fifty-two thousand apps <laughs> it's pretty mental that's just you know that's that, saved yeah. in my cloud so well there you go well, we need to, we need to get you some fac uh, okay. uh i'll have a word to fred we'll see if we can pull some strings maybe Help uh, me, fred. we can do some reviews on some fac apps since you're doing this daily app show that's great cool. Uh, all righty, let's moving on here. Uh, Nembrini. Now, I know you've been checking out some of the Nembrini stuff lately. Sure. They have kind of been a little revolutionary in uh, in recent times. They brought out a bunch of free plugins, a, a, a free noise gate and a, a chorus and a bunch of other guitar plugins. They're very guitar focused. And the one that I think you should definitely check out and, and try is the Crunk the Nembrini Crunk, C-R-U-N-C-K, yep. V2. Uh, it is an AUV3. It's a, an amp sim. It's a simple amp sim. You can get the paid version of all these apps that have a whole bunch more features. But if you just want a different sound and if, you, if you're bored with the GarageBand amp sims but you don't want to spend a bunch of coin, uh, yeah, grab Crunk V2 and just start tweaking and playing around with it and if you if you couple that with some of their uh, their plugins their sort of analog rack plugins that you can put in there as well which again there's i think four of them are free and the rest of them are all paid yeah you basically got your own like mini guitar rig there you can set up your own little pedal board with all the different pedals that they have available so uh yeah nimbrini are doing some really good things and again the developers there are good they listen to what their users have to say and i i appreciate that too um yeah i think when it's a two-way partnership with a developer and and the end user uh it makes better apps if they're actually listening to what their users are actually saying and making updates based on that i'm just looking at their list it looks like there's about nine free apps because they're all the ones that i own uh, <laughs> there were some that were free that are now paid again. Yeah, so they yeah. Did a demo about a couple of months ago. So there may be. So I got in trouble the other day. Someone again down the the, the hater stuff, and which is legitimate because I had a, I had a um, I had a free plugin video and it had all these Nembrini apps, and then they came and they put a big comment saying none of these are free. You suck, and you should feel bad. No. I'm like, sorry, I do feel bad, and I had to change the thumbnail to say apps instead of free oh my apps. god <laughs> love you you actually went back and did it did you? i did i did I so I kind mislead i hate clickbait and passion so i'm like yeah. i'm not clickbaiting anyone and i'm not going to put free when they're not free <laughs> uh how many is that oh, we're seven i reckon so yeah. i want to go uh how are we for time I, I, I do rabbit on a bit um let's uh let's talk let's talk piano um now this isn't a cheap app but it's one that if you love your, if you love piano, uh, you'll love this app. And uh, thank you to uh, I know, Thomas. Thomas, Gl- I can't remember your surname now, Thomas, uh, from the GarageBand users group. He put me onto this app. It's Ravenscroft275. 
it is, uh, in my opinion, I've tried a few different piano apps. I've tried some of the trials and some of the paid apps. It just has the best natural sampled piano sound of anything. Yep. It is the piano, completely untouched, the complete default piano sound. I didn't tweak it in the slightest. That is what's on Things Have Changed. And to me, that is what makes that song good. Uh, not, not uh, Again, that, that's not to say, oh, it's only the piano. But it, it's what makes the song stand out to me is that it's got a... Yeah, that could be a real piano. And again, that's that's a testament to the, the quality of that. That was me playing on my little mini keyboard, but it actually sounds like a grand piano in a in a hall being sampled um, because that's exactly what it is. Uh, so yeah, the Ravens Cross 275, not cheap. Uh, do you have that up there? Is it like all the money? Um, it's it's like 55 bucks. I've, I've got it. So mine just says open. So, But I remember when I did pay for it, it was like, oh God, handing over that much money for an app. It's just like... Getting yes. blood. <laughs> Not cheap, but uh, but worth it. But it's a uh, beautiful app. Yeah, no, just it just works a treat. And AUV three again. So the, if you're not if you're not familiar, if you're newer to iOS, which I know not many folks watching this would be, but uh, the benefit of AUV three versus um, interrap audio is that you can record it as MIDI, which means you can go in and edit, and it means you can bring in other things. You can import MIDI files. You can move things around from one instrument to another. It just gives you a heap more flexibility than using the actual audio recording. Uh, two more to go. Sure. And these are probably the two that I would be sort of lost without. Uh, one is Visibel or Visibel. It's W-I-Z-I-B-E-L. This is by Clevgrand. I love Clevgrand. I love their apps. They're quirky. They're simple. They just do a thing and they do the thing they do well. The reason I like this is that I'm not a designer. Unlike Jade, I don't spend six hours designing assets and doing design work. I like to just have something that works well. So if you if you watch the, the EP or any of the videos that I've released on my channel of the EP, uh, they have that nice little waveform there. They have the album cover. They have a background image that I can set the transparency and the blur to so it kind of looks so arty and nice. And they take about five minutes to do with the with, with uh, If I tried to do something like that myself, it would take me several hours. So again, it's a paid app, and I know that there's other visualizers you can get that are free, but it, it just does it. Like again, you just put your, your song in there, you've got a bunch of different templates and presets, you can just tweak it to your heart's content, and then you export it, and then you upload it. So if you're a music creator, and you want to create cool little visualizations of your songs, but you don't want to spend hours doing lyric videos or creating your own designs, Visibel is the way to go. Yep. Last but not least is the wonderful one again. Uh, uh, Clev Grand get a few mentions here because they make good stuff. It is Bruce Free, mostly because I love saying the word Bruce Free. Uh, B R U S F R I. Why Bruce Free is good is it's a noise reduction plugin that you can use on literally everything. So if you have noisy recordings, a, you should try and not get noisy recordings. So yes, the, the first <laughs> yeah. thing is try to get it right at the source. Uh, don't just record stuff at you know really high gain with lots of noise floor and stuff. Try to go somewhere quiet and record it and, and use the best gear you can. But because we're all in the home studios, we're not in perfectly treated rooms. Sometimes we're recording on our freaking phones. So yep. you do want to be able to, if you get a recording where you get a beautiful performance, but the recording's just not quite right, Bruce Free can work. And again, I used Bruce Free on the vocal, but things have changed because... I, it was actually a demo vocal take that I did, and here's, here's another lesson here. When you're recording a demo, record it as best you can, because you yeah. never know. That may be just that one performance that you capture that you will never capture again. You'll never be able to recreate that performance. So that was actually the demo guide vocal that I wrote, that I, I recorded for that, and it sounded, it just was so in the pocket, and it just worked so well with the piano that I wanted to use it. So Bruce Free to the rescue, jumped in there. Yeah. All you need to do is sample the background noise without your actual audio. So as long as you've got a little bit of just the, the hiss or the static or whatever you're hearing, you hit the ear button, it samples that, and then it just filters that out. It uses some cool EQ and some other voodoo that I don't understand, and it actually uses some magic to remove some of that noise, and it's actually quite phenomenal how it's good incredible. it works. It's incredible. I don't, I don't know how it does it. I'm looking on their page, and there's one review for it, right? <laughs> one out of five, actually. Holy what? shit. Not worth the money. Bought this at half price, and it was still a bit too much. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this, this is, was that Gladys this, Worthington that bought it? I'm, this, I'm so sure. this is Harold, some old guy just sitting around. I'm, I'm, is this the complaints department? I'm just ringing to complain to the complaints department. Is this where I just complain? Like, seriously. 
Uh, they got it at half price. It cost 20 bucks or whatever. So yeah. getting it for 10 bucks, and they're still like, nah, it does reduce a little bit of noise, but it's not magical. That's what it says. It's not magical. <laughs> I had a jackhammer in the background, and it didn't even reduce it much at all. Unbelievable what people think they can get for 10 bucks. <sighs> yes. Yeah. So there, that, that, that's my 10. Um, awesome. But, Thank you. Uh, and I'm, I'm intrigued now because I, I want everyone else to do this. I want you to interview a bunch of other cool people and get their 10 so that I know what I should be using because I feel I feel that I, I only scratched the surface. Like I've been using iOS for five years and I feel like an absolute rookie newbie because I've, <laughs> I've only got like about 300 apps and like now I know that you've got so many thousand, I feel quite inadequate. <laughs> but a lot of them, you know, I'm never going to open. When I first got my iPhone, I just downloaded every free app I could every, get, you I know? know. So I that's know. what did it. Um, and you saw my apps on my iPad. Like, I've got so many folders, it's ridiculous. But um, And I don't use all of them. So most of them I do keep on here just in case. Yeah. And I still haven't used them forever, which is ridiculous. Yeah. All right, so we are yeah. nearing the end. So thank you for going through it. I'm really interested in what people are using as well because... You know, uh, there's so much amazing music that is coming out from people using GarageBand, using iOS, that is mm. getting really overwhelming. I remember when I started making music on on the platform, I was I felt like a I was alone in the wilderness. I said that when well, we first I met, I was like, "Oh my god, dude, you're making music as well, and it's really high quality. This is sick." Because I was living in a, in the US for a couple of years, and every person I met at a bar or something, and was mm. saying. Oh, yeah, they'd say, oh, how are you making your music? I'm like, oh, I'm using my iPad. And every one of them did this eye roll, like, uh. <laughs> and I just it got to the point I just wanted to start punching people and going, oh, yeah, and I heard your CD, by the way, too, man. It sucks. You should start using an iPad because how much did you pay for that album? Oh, $10,000. Wow. Yeah. It sounds like toilet to me. Um, all right, so I do have one last question for you. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, I'm ripping you off for your idea from your creator series. <laughs> when, in your opinion, is it the best time for someone to start creating music and how? Oh, I think you, I think you know, you could write my answer to this. You know exactly what I'm going <laughs> to say. I wrote it for you. Scripted. <laughs> the best time to start is now. And the best way to start is use what you have right now and just get started. It, if I if I could go back, and if you if you asked it a different way, if you said if you could go back to yourself at uh, at 20 years old, uh, what advice would you give yourself? And I'd be like, dude, uh, you got all, so, you, you got nothing on. It's so weird. Like you, I had all the time and none of the motivation there. Now I'm struggling to scrape the time together, and I got all this motivation to do things. So yes, just start now. When you don't know where to start, just start. And one thing I say again, another one of my little motivational mantras is, uh, yeah, um, everyone starts at zero. Yeah. So the only way to get from zero to one is to do your first thing. And I don't care what that thing is. Whatever you want to do, do it. And someone very wise wrote a song once, and it was something along the lines of do what makes you happy, something like that. So, uh, yeah, don't spend your time worrying about what other people think. Don't spend your time worrying about what might fail, what might not work, what might sound crappy. Just do it. Get it done. Get off the mark, as we say, with a cricketing phrase here. Get your first runs on the board and then uh, move on from there. And you may not be perfect. You may not ever be at the level that the people you aspire to be at, but you're sure as heck not going to get better by not starting and not trying. So get out there and do it. Damn straight. All right, so I want to thank everybody who's stayed around in the chat. Thank you for hanging out. I hope um, you like what you're getting from my new shows. If you do, hit the subscribe button. Have to do all that stuff. Hit mm. like. Share it around if you must. Um, please come back because we're going to continue doing this and um, hopefully it becomes a thing. Um, if you want to find out anything more about Pete Johns, there are links in the description to Studio Live today, to his new album, and you can get to his YouTube page through Studio Live today. I want to thank you so very much, Pete, for hanging out, being my first, my virgin interview on the How To App on iOS. Um, and look, uh, people, keep following this man's advice. He's, he's, he works his absolute ass off to bring so much joy to so many people uh, as a creator and you too one day will end up having a beautiful wife like he does who uses his money to buy his ep sorry <laughs> gold man she cracks me up 
<laughs> she's a legend. <laughs> so thank you so much, Pete. And um, thank you, everybody, for hanging out. And uh, we'll catch you next time. My pleasure. Thank you, Jade. Love awesome. It. You have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.